to do the same reaction as different trials. That means we are going to mix up different different amounts of these two and we are going to measure how fast the reaction is going on. That means we are trying to measure this, the rate, by changing what? The concentration this. So now we have two quantities are changing. What is it? One is the rate, other one is what? The concentration of fire sulfate. We, uh, we don't need to worry about this. Why? That is constant. We maintain that as constant. So now our expression is now changing to what? Now we have the rate of this reaction proportional. I'm just giving the K. I'm just going for proportional. So now I, again I am leaving one more unknown, right? So now I am going for proportional to what? IO is found A. Raise the power of X. Now we have the relationship like this. The rate of this reaction is now directly proportional to the concentration of fire sulfate. Raise the power of X. So now by measuring the K, and the concentration of fire sulfate, we can simply find out what? The order of the X. So now, these are the two quantities changing. Now we have to fix what? This. If the rate is doubling, when you double the concentration, what is the value for X? This is doubling. When you double the concentration, means what is X? That is 1. If it is, if the, if you double the concentration, the rate is doubling. Means what? What is the value for x? x is 1. If you double the concentration, the rate is 4 times faster. What is x? 2. That's it. That's a simple relationship, right? So, the concentration and the rates. So, here the problem is how we are going to measure the rates. Because we need the rate, right? How fast the rate is going. Therefore, we are going to find out the rate. So, to find out the rate, we have to measure a property which is changing during the reaction, right? Then only you can measure the rate, no? If you want to measure the rate, what do you need? You need to measure a property which is changing. So what properties, you know, in the magnesium, can you remember the magnesium ribbon yes. experiment? We measured the mass, or you can measure the volume, or you can measure the pH, right? So you have to decide what property is easy for us to measure. So what property for this reaction is easy to measure? This is aqueous, aqueous, solid, and as of what? Sulfur. What property is measurable? Because we need a property which is changing, right? Then only you can find out the rate, no? Because for rate, what do you need? Change in concentration divided by time. That's what we need. So you need the concentration and the time. When you divide it, you will get the rate. So, to, measure, to find out the change in concentration, we have to measure something. Okay. So, what are you going to measure here? pH, pH or value of here? No pH. You can measure the pH here in this case because you know, even the product, we have hydrogen ion. That is sulfurous acid. Again, we have ions. H plus ion. So it is a little bit difficult to measure the pH. Yeah, here the sample is a precipitate. See, look at this. Mass of sulfur. So how you can measure the mass of the sulfur? So it's a precipitate means solid, right? So is it possible to measure the mass of the sulfur? Yes. yes. How? Start initially at zero, then with the mass in the time, you will take the out of Okay, so you have to take the sulfur out of the solution? Because you have to measure, no? Yes. How you are going, yeah. You filter and then dry it, so then you need beads. <laughs> it's a long procedure, right? 
Could you do the whole thing on a scale? The whole uh, so experiment is going on away. a scale? What is hydrogen? You don't have any hydrogen. Where is oxygen? No. Oxygen is a product. Hydrogen is a product. Mm. If something is going away from the system, it is easy. Yeah. But here, nothing, you know. There is no gas involved in here. Is it, it is measurable? That is a very big problem, you know, heat. Color? It should be significant change, otherwise you can measure it, no? Is the color? Is there color? Yeah, yeah. some has a color, it's a pale yellow, but measuring the color, you need very sophisticated equipment. We don't have it. So, yeah. so here we are going to go for a quantitative aspect of this. Here we are going to measure the sulfur. That means how much sulfur is formed. So here when you are mixing these two substances together, sulfur is the precipitate because sulfur is insoluble, right? That is the product. So the sulfur is going to form as small <coughs> particles. So here we are going to have sulfur particles. Sulfur particles are going to form. So the formation of the sulfur, because that, that is one of the product, will give you how fast the reaction is going on, right? If the precipitate is forming faster, means what? The reaction is going faster, right? If the precipitate takes time to form, means what? The reaction is slow. So now the slow and fast, you can decide based on what? The formation of sound. So, what you can do here is, so I'm going to create a table here where we are going to measure the sulfur, how much sulfur is formed. So, so here you can do that two different ways. You can fix the time and you can measure the sulfur. That's one way of doing that. So that means, say time, say after 10 seconds or 10 uh, or 50 seconds. How much sulfur is formed? What are the kinds of sulfur formed? Or for the, that is for the first trial, right? Second trial, again, 50 seconds. How much formed? Third trial, again, 50 seconds. How much sulfur is formed? So that is one way of doing that. We are, we are fixing the time and measuring what? The amount of sulfur. Here the problem is measuring the sulfur. Your sulfur is a precipitate, it's forming within the solution. It is very difficult to measure the amount of sulfur formed within a certain time. So I'm going to go other way around. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to fix the sulfur. I'm going to fix this, say, 10 or milligram or say, 1 gram of sulfur. So I'm going to fix the mass of the sulfur and I'm going to measure the time. What is the time here? So in the first trial, I am mixing the acid and the trial sulfate. I am trying to measure what is the time taken to form one gram of sulfur. In the next trial, I am going to do again what is the time taken for the formation of one gram of sulfur. So if you go on doing that, how the time and the rates are related. So have you got the idea of what I am doing, trying to do here? I am fixing the amount of sulfur and I am trying to measure the time taken. Right? So now, what is the relationship between the rate and the time? How these two quantities are related? Here I am measuring the time to form, a, form one gram of sulfur. So what can you say about the, your time measurement? and the uh, rate. Do they have any relationship? More time, less rate. 
More time means less weight, or more time means more weight, fast weight. Should it be one gram all the time? All the time, one gram. So if I have one gram, I add another gram to make it two. No, 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 no. We are doing separate trials. Each trial, I am recording the time taken to the formation of one gram of power. First trial, say 50 seconds. Second trial, say 60 seconds. Third trial, 90 seconds. So I am fixing the sample and measuring the time taken for the formation of that much of sample. So now the question is how this time and the weights are related. Are they directly proportional or inversely proportional? Inversely. 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 More time means what? Slow. Slow reaction. Inversely, right? So therefore, here, what is the relationship here? The relationship is the rate. One over two. Inversely. So the time and rates are related, but they are inversely. What about the concentration and the rate here? What about these two? Concentration of the acid, sorry, concentration of the thiosulfate and the rate. How these two are related? They are directly, see? When we increase the concentration of thiosulfate, the reaction go fast. Less concentration, slow. So these are directly proportional. Those two are inversely proportional. In either case, what do we have here? Rate and rate. So the rate is directly proportional to the concentration. The rate is directly proportional to 1 over t. So what is the relationship between the concentration and the time? 1 over t is equal to concentration. Not equal, proportional. Right? So now the relationship is what? 